so that what he really did, what he did in front of me, and I was completely pied pipered by John, I just went along on the sort of magic dust of the trail behind him, very enthusiastically um, encouraging the artists to listen to him, that they got into the, th into the thread of it. Everyone, uh, welcome back again to uh, uh, the John Truscott uh, Enhancement Series, I think we'd almost call it. Um, and in this particular interview, um, as I indicated earlier uh, in the Underwood uh, part of the uh, interviews, we're going to be more talking about Rick Birch and almost, if you talk about Rick Birch, you need to talk about um, the backbone of Rick's work, which is Barbara Absalom, I suspect. Um, and there was a real interplay of two incredibly intelligent individuals and the budget scenarios, uh, because you know one couldn't out, you know, get more money without the other trying to match it, and vice versa. And it was a real tussle. Uh, Bob said, um, "I got the impression that there was a great amount of creative uh, conflict between the two, uh, and but the outcome." is what Rick was oh, so... ...that are very consistent about John Truscott is his ability to focus on the job that is in front of him, his appreciation of other people's skills and abilities. And Rick Birch was, you know, a rising star at that time. And like John, very, very gifted very gifted and and that's what bob minikin says we you know we're not talking about ordinary level creatives we're talking about people that are rare you know um very rare um and at the top top in their abilities and um john would have definitely appreciated that and rick said to me that he actually you know knew john's work um, and was supportive of John being um, given the position of um, sitescape um, designer, so to speak, and that he had no, you know, was in awe of his ability. So, I, and they had mutual friends, one of whom was Dan Flannery, the lighting um, guy, so who had worked on the Olympic Games with Rick. Rick had worked there um, as, as a young um, designer under Dan, who was more experienced. So there were connections into them and they were working in the same area. So in, I read in an interview that Barbara Absalon said and that Bob Minikin said as well, and this is very true of John, is that the quality that John brought to the site was gobsmacking, that it was astonishing and quality. And Barbara talked about um, he wouldn't allow any signs in, in the, um, on the site, not even a little stick-on sign saying, you know, use another toilet or something like that or, you know, a bit of plumbing. His attention to detail was scrupulous. It, it was exacting. And that then, Bob Minikin says, you know, lifted, and so did Barbara, lifted the whole quality of things so that therefore people were respectful of the site as well. Um, so there was that importance, and I presume that lifting the quality like that would have also lifted the sites in which um, uh, Rick's performers were, uh, were performing as well. Um, I think through John, um, Ken Cato provided graphics for the back of the Aqua Dome. Is it that what it is? Yeah, Aqua mm -hmm. So there are collaborations, you know, complementary activities in those ways of, of two, two people who, on one level, and this is, is what Rick, Rick said, deep down they had a deep respect for one another's abilities um, and we settle their differences um, in the 1990s. That's good. So, I mean, I think you've got, you've got the young buck and the old buck as well, you know, that really there's that there, if I'm going to be candidly honest. True. Um, analysis uh, on Rick Birch uh, as far as the creative 
power that he brought to the situation. I just think it was a perfect match um, to uh, John Truscott. Uh, and there was, you know, Bob Minikin spoken about it. There was always uh, a, a budgetary tussle between the two. Um, and I really do think that what was probably happening was that the board, um, including uh, Sir Leo Hilshire, uh, the tough nut of finances in Queensland, were sitting down and they were being exposed to really visionary individuals doing presentations and opening up their eyes to, well, just what is the beast that we've got here called Expo 88 and having their eyes opened as to the huge potential. Um, and, you know, it, I, I've interviewed, so I've interviewed Lou uh, and I, I have a feeling um, that he understood, you know, the importance of what the opportunity was. So um, let us just cut off there. These artists were visited by John where he gave them the magic spell that he had inside him. He, they knew instinctively that John was creating something which would take these artists much further than anything else that we could see.